The next part in this series is going to be covering how to create content and what content to create. Um, if you're going to have a website, you're going to have to have something that people can use and, more importantly, interact with. That would be the ideal situation. Um, a website that encourages user interaction is going to have a lot better chance of success because, quite simply, if the user can use it, um, you're going to have more activity at your site, and activity breeds business, whether it's through affiliate income, pay-per-click, selling advertising, or selling your own product. Um, user interaction is key. A perfect child or a perfect uh, poster child um, for this is eBay. It is a completely user-based site. Um, eBay doesn't sell anything but its services, and basically the eBay community is who tattletales and reports other eBay sellers and people out of regulation and people who are violating the terms of service. It's the eBay users that engage with each other on the buying and the selling. eBay is simply facilitating that activity with their interface and with their solutions. They're just basically an online venue for a marketplace to buy and sell, um, which happens every day at more focused locations across the world um, all the time. So when you're creating content um, or pages for your website, if you can incorporate or integrate user involvement or user interactivity, that is going to be a big plus. Some common ways to do that are with blogs and forums. Um, other ways to do that are like with you know link swapping um, programs or ideas. Another real popular way is to allow um, different pages to maybe accept comments or allow users to engage, um, kind of like a forum, but uh, you know leave comments on like a blog setting, for example. So um, I say all that to bring up the point that before you begin actually making your web pages, you're going to want to keep that in mind. That you know what do you want each page to accomplish? What are the links that you're going to want to have on it? As a general rule of thumb, you're not going to want to put any links on the page that don't profit you. Um, if they go to an external source somewhere, make it be an affiliate link, especially if it's a site that competes with you. Um, that's kind of the beauty of the internet, is that you can make money by sending people to your competition through, through affiliate programs. So, um, you know, it's not bad necessarily to uh, bring up other sites and services and solutions that compete with you just so long as the, in the way you do it, it will profit you if that customer chooses to use the other the other service and not yours. Either way you're making money and that's the whole point of being a webmaster. So when you begin to create content, okay, um, you know, first categorize and organize your content. Are these going to be fixed pages like an about page, a services page, or are you going to have an ongoing collection of content like a blog, or are you going to have interactive content like a forum? Obviously fixed pages you're going to need to write the words that go there yourself. Uh, the same with blog entries, but blog entries can usually have places for comments for users to leave um, notes and comments about what you've posted. And then forums are really great places for users to comment and interact with other users, not just with you and your blog. One uh, little trap that I find a lot of new webmasters get into is they start to create their content on Microsoft Word. And the reason they do is because it's something they're familiar with. It's got all the nice icons to bold and color things. And the problem with that is with Microsoft Word, they add excessive amount of tags, which are um, pieces of code that talk to your internet browser and is responsible for what you see when a page comes up. And these tags a lot of times can create unexpected problems and a lot of headaches for webmasters because they don't, or new webmasters because they don't understand why it's not working when they copy and paste whatever they made on Word. So um, my first advice when you're creating content is one of two things. If you don't have an HTML editor, okay, which is nothing more than a program like Word, in that it has all the familiar icons to bold things, underline, center, except instead of Word, when you create the content that you want in the same way, it turns it into HTML code, not Microsoft Word code. And so now all of a sudden when you try to copy and paste either the code or the page that you made, you're going to get a lot more better and expected results because there's not these unnecessary excessive tags um, from the proprietary software of Microsoft Word. So if you're using an HTML editor, that is by far the best way to go to create your content. Um, an HTML editor looks like this. 
Um, this HTML editor is my favorite. It's called Microsoft Front Page, and uh, you can have a design view. And again, if you notice at the top, bold, italicized, underlined, center, all these are pretty familiar with uh, um, Microsoft Word, for example. And you know, if you want to make a hyperlink, you know, as simple as highlighting something and then going up, or in this case, right clicking and then selecting hyperlink. And you would type here the site that you wanted it to go to. Like if I wanted it to go to Google, I would type in httpgoogle.com. And when I do, you'll notice that this lights up blue because it goes to Google now. So when people click on this, it will go to Google. Um, but the nice thing about Microsoft Front Page is that it's got a split view. And it will show the corresponding code for any item I select. But basically that's what I was saying is all this code here, all this nasty HTML that you don't want to spend learning, especially spend time learning to get your site up online, is all generated automatically as you create your text and your links and your pages. Okay, And you can do all this just like with Microsoft Word. It's very intuitive with the buttons and the icons. And like for example right here is how you create a hyperlink if you don't want to right click. So um, that's going to be your first way to create content get a HTML editor and there is a bunch of free ones out there on the web just do a simple Google search of an HTML editor and you'll see what I mean um, it's not something you have to pay for however uh, you know programs like Dreamweaver or Microsoft front page they may carry a price but if you're going to be uh, doing web mastering for some long-term period of time it'll be well worth it Otherwise, if you don't have an HTML editor or you don't need one, meaning you're not wanting to create hyperlinks or anything like that, um, which I, I don't really see why you would, you would want those features. But um, the other thing to do when you're creating content is if you just need to capture the words, put it in Notepad. And Notepad is Microsoft's basic word editor. And if you open Notepad on your desktop, this is it. It's basically a blank white screen that allows you to type only text or text only and the benefit of this is it does not add any net um, unnecessary tags like Microsoft Word if you do have a Word document with all the content you need then I suggest that you copy that content and paste it into Notepad and then copy that and paste it into an HTML editor and what that will do is it will capture just the text. You may have to reformat it in the HTML editor, but that's fine. You don't want to have the Microsoft Word tags messing up your whole site. Um, and that's basically another way to capture content and help you add it into your website. But I bring this video up about creating content because it is a step that um, is not you're not going to be online yet. This is going to be a step that you're either still writing stuff down on a piece of paper or better yet you're actually entering it into an HTML editor or a notepad and I say this because I, I find a lot of new webmasters don't take this step. They, they want to get a website, they want to get the pages up, but you know, I mean if you think about it quite logically you have to have the pages already made before you can put them on the web and that's why this step needs to be here and why it's so important. So make sure you get all your spelling down, you get all the important things that you want to say um, it's important for SEO, which is in the next part, search engine optimization, that you get um, a lot of the keywords and a lot of things that you want to say that have to do with the subject of your site well written to where those uh, keywords and the themes of those keywords are found um, quite frequently within your natural text. So um, use those pointers to create the content, and I'll see you on the next part.